Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first of the Russ Weekly live show here on YouTube about all things photo, video, live streaming related. It is the Wednesday before the Christmas and I hope you got your shopping done. If you haven't, then you might find something you like on this show, but you're going to have to order it like Amazon Prime Super overnight to get that thing on time. Um, but we're going to look at a couple of really cool things. A couple of things that I've been wanting to, I've, I've had them for, well, not a long time, but I had them for a few weeks. Haven't used them all that much yet. I will do better shows around them. This is going to be kind of a first look because I want to get a couple of things out of the way before the end of the year because this is going to be the last show like this of the year. I might do some little thing, but probably not. Uh, so this is kind of a wrap up and we'll do a quick little Q&A at the end, but I don't want to be here all day because um, I get back to the family. So we are going to be looking at this lens baby, the velvet lens, which is this super cool not, I guess soft focus would be a good word for it. Soft focus lens for doing portraits to give this really cool glowy softness to it. And what's really interesting about it is the, the wider the aperture. So it's a, this one is the 56 millimeter f1.6. This is available in pretty much every camera mount you could think of. So you can get it in micro four thirds, obviously, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, but you know, all the big ones. Um, the, the aperture, the widest aperture at 1.6, that's where you get the most glow. And as you stop it down, that glow starts to go away. So at around, I think, f4 or so, it's almost gone completely and you're basically using a regular lens. It's all mechanical, all manual, very long focus. You can see here, let's go for, um, let's go for the close-up here. So you can see here, this, it's got a very long focus rack. Its closest distance is actually, there we go, it's actually quite close. What does it say? Uh, well, that would be the infinity focus point. Let's go the other direction. The closest focus is five inches, 13 centimeters. That's, that's pretty good. Um, and if you're that close and wide open, then you're going to have massive, massive glowy, glowy. But of course, if for portraits, and again, the long focus rack is good for that precision focus. And you'll see, we're going to go out in the other room, and I'm going to put this on a camera so you can look through it. You'll see that when you're wide open, it can actually be quite hard to focus. And so one of the things that you can do is, is stop it down a bit, get focus, get critical focus, and then open it back up. But things can't be moving. You're not going to take pictures of your kids running across the lawn with this lens. But for what little I've played with it so far, it's quite beautiful. It's quite a nice effect. So anyway, we're going to play with that a little bit. Um, we're going to put Ryan on the camera, make, his, make him glow. We give him a nice glow today. Uh, so there's that. We're going to play with that today. And then the uh, FJ Westcott Eye Lighter, which is not a new product. It's been around for a long time. I've always wanted one, but just not wanted to spend the money. It's like 300 bucks. But um, it's beautiful. And I did get one on loan right now. So thank you to my friends at Westcott. And also thank you to the friends at Lens Baby who sent this out on loan. These are not for me to keep. Just full disclosure. These are going, both of these are going to be going back uh, once I'm done playing with them and reviewing them. And uh, the eye lighter is, uh, it's, it's nice. I, I may actually have to buy one of these because it really is a beautiful thing. I don't know if I'm going to buy this or not. I haven't had it long enough. So we'll, uh, we will see. Uh, my good friend Sean Mark Nipper out there in the uh, Real House Films there, cough, cough, good morning. He sent me an, an animoji um, of the poop animoji this morning telling me how unwell he's feeling. I'm sorry, buddy. I hope you feel better soon. Uh, let's see here. Anything else we want to hit on here before we head out into the main room? Nope. I think we're good. Let's, uh, is there anything? Oh, let me just be real quick. Let me just, I know we've done this before. I, I was going to do a whole nother video and I kind of forgot, but if you're doing any last minute business travel. It's actually not even for this year. You could be traveling next year, but if you're going to be booking any trips before the end of this year, use ups I should have a link on there, upside.com. Uh, if you use the code Bose Photo Joseph, you get a free pair of Bose headphones. If you just use the code Photo Joseph, you get a $100 gift card back, which is kind of awesome, right? And the Photo Joseph one goes forever. The Bose Photo Joseph one is just until the end of this year. It was supposed to be just January, uh, just November, and then they extended it for me. I never did a whole other video. I'm sorry, upside folks. But uh, anyway, if you're booking any business travel before the end of the year, it can be for next year, but you're booking it before the end of this year, upside.com, Bose Photo Joseph, or Photo Joseph. Cool? Cool. I, I keep forgetting to show that with you guys, so I wanted to do that. Okay, let's, uh, let's go out in the other room here. I need to unplug. Oops, I need to unplug. And uh, yeah, Bart's saying it's a good deal. You got to book your NAB. There you go. Perfect. Book your NAB travel now using the code, code Bose Photo Joseph or Photo Joseph, and you'll get either the headphones or the 100 bucks, whatever you prefer. Um, I think I got everything I need. All right, let's go out into the other room. Okay, we're going to start with the eyeliner. So this is the eyeliner. It's, it's funny because it's enormous. Um, but it actually packages up quite small. Here, don't, don't move the camera. I'm just going to grab this. It packages up into 
this little thing here, which is, I think, quite impressive, frankly. That includes the stand, the light stand that it's, wait, does it include the light stand? No, it didn't include the light stand, sorry, I lied. But you could put a light stand in there easily, obviously. Uh, but it breaks down into, you can see these, this big half circle, it's four pieces, right? This is a piece, yeah, one, two, three, four. I'm not gonna assemble the whole thing. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube of how to assemble it, we're good, we got the right one. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube of how to assemble this, which I had to watch because the instructions were kind of sketch. But it comes together into this U shape, you, you stretch or just slide this big silver reflector on it. You can buy an additional, which I do have, I haven't even put it on yet, a white to go on top of this, because this is very, very reflective, very specular. You put the white one on there, it's a softer bounce light. And the whole idea here is that it's bouncing light up into your subject's face. So you have lighting overhead like this. I'm gonna set it up, I'm gonna move it in front of my face now, but then I'm gonna rearrange it and set it up through this camera so you can kind of see it a little bit more properly. But just looking at it now versus like that, I don't know how much of a difference that's making. I can't really, there's that better tilting it. There we go. So you can kind of tilt it, get it in position. So it really just bounces that light back up in, which can be really, really good, especially, I mean, this is gonna look good on anybody, right? Let's face it, you take anybody, you bounce a little light up on them, it's gonna look nice. You may have noticed on my desk where I do my main broadcast here, that table is a sheet of aluminum. There's a reason for that. It's not just because it looks kind of cool. It bounces light up onto my face and it just makes me look ever so slightly nicer, which at my age, let's face it, you need all the help you can get. Which, one of, that's one of the points on this. If you're photographing older people who've got a little bit of wrinkly, baggy eye kind of things going on, this can work wonders just to fill those lights in underneath. And it, obviously you could just take a regular reflector and put it under it, but you're not gonna get that wrap around. That's the whole thing about this is this curve just really wraps things around. So let's, uh, I'm gonna position this over here so we can see this a little bit more properly. Try to do this without knocking things over. And then I'm going to switch the camera up. Zoom in a little bit tighter here. And hopefully that'll work. Um, I'm gonna switch over to this view. And you should be, you should see me. I'm probably not, oh, I can grab the uh, remote here so I can focus this thing. There we go. So there we go, so I'm in focus now. Get rid of that cable. And if we, let's see here, here, I can really see the tilting. I know I'm not looking right into the camera because I'm looking at a monitor above it, just to really show the bounce on that. And this is one, well, there are other lights in the room, but this is one main light that's on me right now. And this is really, I think, doing a nice job of bouncing that light in and just really filling things in. I think, I think it looks tremendous. And this, obviously, once it's on a light stand, you can raise or lower it. So I'll bring that down a little bit, it'll be a little bit less. Um, if I wanted to go for a wider shot, kind of fill some more in. But let me zoom in a little bit here. And let me just let's see here, zoom in a little bit on that. I don't know how close that's gonna be. Probably a little bit too close and zoom back out just a little there. Step back into place. A little bit too tight. A little bit wider this side probably should have. Ryan come over here. Yeah, Ryan, why don't you step in there? All right, Ryan's turn to step in. All right. Now Ryan's in place, there we go. Now, let's go a little bit wider. <laughs> What's that? Ryan's a little tall. Ryan's a little tall, I am too. Just, but you look into the lens, try to look into the monitor. And uh, let's focus that on him. Let's switch over to that view. There you go, so now you're seeing that. And now, as I raise and lower the eye lighter there. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You can kind of see under his chin, we bring in some more of that light under there. Bring that up nicely. And all right, go ahead and close your eyes. And if I just, let me just get rid of it entirely. Let's do one more view here. So I'm gonna get rid of this entirely out of the way. There we go. So there's just the single light on him and then bringing this back in, bring that underneath, fill that in. <laughs> what is it, bright or something? Just a bit. Just a bit just bright. A bit. Really fill that in, bring that in. And of course we can angle that if needed to really, fill, look at that, really bring the light up under him there. So. It's, I think it's a really nice effect. I, I really like what we get out of it. Uh, again, if you're, if you're dealing with any kind of wrinkle, baggy eyes type of thing, I think it's gonna be quite beneficial. I think overall it's a, it's a really nice touch. So, so we got that. <laughs> you don't have to leave yet. Uh, well, yeah, go ahead over there while I sw swap out the lens. All right, so there's just a quick first look at the eyelighter. Um, I will do a more comprehensive look at it later. I will actually do some shoots with it, show you some client shots with it, that sort of thing. But um, for right now, that's what we've got. So now, let's take a look at this lens. So I'm gonna take my lens baby lens here. 
put it back on, put on the GH5, and let's see what this looks like. So again, I'm gonna have to have Ryan come in here in just a moment. Uh, and eyes were just his, your poor eyes, his poor eyes. All right, so I'm gonna go back a little bit. This now this is pretty long because it is a 56 mil lens. Um, let's see. I know you guys aren't seeing through this one yet. I'll bring it up for you in just a moment. Okay, you're gonna have to take your hands yeah, down. Sorry. Nice. All right. All right. There we go. Bide your time. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch over to this view. So this is a a long lens, right? 56 mil, it's 112 millimeter equivalent on a micro four thirds. Now we are at F, uh, I think four or something like that. I actually can't see it because of the, the uh, <laughs> I can't see it because of the, the ninja on my, on my camera. All right, you, you gotta, you gotta take the hand in. Sorry, buddy, sorry. So I've, I've focused now and I'm using focus peaking, which you are not seeing. I don't have that going out. Um, actually here, let me just turn that on real quick so you can see that because I think that would be interesting to see that view, so let's turn on the info, there we go. So now you should, yeah you, can, yeah, you can just barely see the focus peaking, there we go. So so there we get the focus peaking coming in, but now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the lens a bit, and it's an, the camera's an after party, so it's automatically compensating, and there's, okay, there's all the way open. So at this point, that's super dreamy looking, and, and as I focus it, you cannot, you cannot, you really gotta stop moving, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can keep your eyes closed. You can keep your eyes closed. Here, let me let me move the uh, I'll move the eyeliner down a little bit so it's not quite so. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's turn the light down on him a little bit. Hail to you, master. All right, there we go. Okay, let the camera crank the ISO to compensate. So now I'm again I'm wide open, but you see I can't I can't tell when I'm totally focused. The uh, there's no focus peaking showing up on here. So if I stop it down quite a bit. Now we're gonna get our focus peaking back. I can nail that in, open it up all the way, and go, okay, well, that's just too dreamy, that's crazy, but let's drop it down so there's one stop open, or one stop close, rather. There's one more stop close. That's probably a pretty sweet spot right there. I mean, you can see his skin is taking on a very nice, soft glow. Um, obviously, this is gonna be a little bit more relevant with a pretty girl other than Ryan, but, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll do that next time. We'll, we'll try and get someone a little bit more appropriate for this in here. But all the glowy that you're seeing is all in lens. I think that's a pretty nice spot. If you had, if you had a pretty girl in there, I think that would be pretty good. Right there. Let me go and get rid of the UI on here so that it's hidden away. And oops, wrong. Uh, turn that off. There we go. So now you can see a little bit better. So that's. I don't know. What do you guys think? I I like it. I think, I think it's pretty cool. I like that really neat, dreamy look. I think it could be really effective for a lot of type of portraits. But anyway, that's what I wanted to show you right now. I wanted to give you a quick look at these things because I've had them. I needed to show them to you before. I want to show them before the end of the year, but we'll look at them again in 2018 a little bit more closely. Um, I think that's everything out here. Let's go back into the other studio. Uh, let's take a look at the comments again. Let me get my ears back in. Um, <laughs> Ryan says, <laughs> fancy glow is fancy for let's blind Ryan. I guess I could have turned the lights down sooner. I just, I don't know. It looks good with all that light on there. <laughs> He's closing the door. He's like, I don't know, look at you. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Um, Meteor Show says, this lens will work on a Canon 80D. Yes, you can buy this lens in any mount. If you click on the links down below, of course, I've got links to these down below. Uh, if you click on the Amazon or the B&H link, it'll take you to the search results for the lens. It's the lens, the company's called Lens Baby, all one word. And the product is called the Velvet. And there's two different lenses. They make, you know, let me just pull it up here. They make a, um, the 56 millimeter, millimeter that you just saw, and then a longer one, which I don't recall. So I'm going to pull that up right now and show it to you. And if you're shooting micro four thirds because it doubles the focal length, the longer one is probably too long for a portrait lens. The 56 is ideal. Even it could be considered a little bit on the long side, but you know, you know, it is what it is. You just set up to, to use it right. Let's scare lens, baby. Velvet and switch over to this. So 56 f 1.6. So there you can see you can get it for Nikon. It's 400. Here's for Canon EF 400. Uh, Fuji. It's available. It's available for Sony. Um, Canon EF is that? Oh no. Now we get into the 85. So 85 is the next one. So there's an 85 millimeter. So if you're doing full frame, if you're shooting full frame and you want that portrait lens, then the 85 millimeter is going to be the way to go. If you're shooting uh, micro Four Thirds, then that 85 is going to be too long for anything. That's going to be a 170 millimeter lens. I mean, maybe you want it, but that seems a bit long. And if you're shooting APS-C, then, you know, pick your pick whatever works for you. But even there, probably that 56. For portrait lens, that 56. That, to see, the portrait lens, 56 times, what is APS-C is times 1.6, right? So that would be an 89 millimeter, like a 90 mil lens. That's kind of perfect for portraiture. 
Yeah, that's kind of a perfect portrait lens. So if you're shooting APS-C size sensor, you probably want that 56. If you're shooting full frame, you're going to want the 85. If you're shooting micro four thirds, then 56 is the widest you, you can get. Little on the long side, but uh, yeah, but it works. It's great. So yeah, that's uh, it's a nice little lens. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, look, you can even get it in silver. Cool. Oh, it's more cost more, but you can get it in silver if you want to do that. Uh, and I think it's funny because the lens looks in these pictures always looks shorter than the actual one that I had in my hands. Um, I don't know if it's a difference because it probably is a difference because of the micro four thirds, just how the lens has to be shaped to get the elements farther. I don't know. Anyway. There it is. So links are down below. Please do use those links if you decide to buy. Appreciate that. And uh, and that's that. So let's see what else is going on in the comments here. Uh, <laughs> Bart says one of his cats is enjoying the show. Well, at least somebody's enjoying this today. Oh, how expensive is the Westcott training reflector? Westcott tanning reflector. <laughs> it's not a tanning reflector. It's three hundred dollars. Uh, the eye lighter. It's three hundred. And so that's why I always feel like it's it's a little on the spendy side, but. If you do a lot of portraits, uh, that you know those kind of headshots or head and shoulders, even portraits, and you just want that little, I think it's, I think it's great. I think it, it'll make a lot of your setup go really quick and easy. It is, it's portable. Of course, you saw the case. I don't know that I would want to break it down and set it up to go on location all the time. It's certainly uh, the kind of thing you're having in the studio. Just wheel it over and get that amazing, glorious headshot of someone super quick because you stick one light, this thing, and boom, and they're like, oh, I've never looked better. <laughs> oh, no. Um, it, Ron, oh, uh, Ryan is telling me the Adorama Link is a closeout kit. Um, that's interesting. Let's see here. Adorama. I'll, uh, let me pull that up and see what that is. Let's see if I can find the right one. I light her. So that might be mean it is on sale. The closeout kit, um, well, it's costing more, but that's including a stand. Is this what you were looking at, Ryan, or is there something else? Hmm. Okay, and let's just try, try typing Westcott eyeliner, see? Yeah, I don't know. Well, click the link that's in the notes. Apparently, Ryan found something that might be a little bit of a deal, so um, try that out. See if it's there. Otherwise, just buy from Amazon or from B&H or wherever you choose to buy your toys. But yeah, I like it. I think it's a really nice product. Like I said, now that I've got it, and I'm, I know I was supposed to have a client shoot with it a couple weeks ago. The client canceled um, or postponed. So once I get her in here, she's a little bit um, elderly. So I think that that'll really work out nice. If she'll let me show the picture to you guys, then um, I think it'll be a really good example of what it can do. And I guess that's it. Um, you guys, Ryan's giving my audience a hard time. Okay, Q&A. Any of you guys got any questions like last minute thing before I bail out of this year, next year, before the end of the year, hopefully we're going to do a full studio rework. Like everything is going to, I have all these grand plans and basically three to five days to do it all. And you know, it's not going to happen. Uh, you know, that the beginning of the year is going to be a complete disaster in here, but um, I will set up like a time-lapse camera to try and document the whole thing. I don't know. We'll figure this out. Maybe do a show in the middle of it. So look at the disaster that we, the mess we have created. But yeah, I have all these ideas of how to completely rearrange everything. And by rearrange everything, I mean everything changes out there because I can, because it's fun, because I want change. Change is good. As soon as you get something working right, must be time to change it. Must be time to change it. Uh, Marvin says, any ideas for stopping condensation on lenses in the cold? Well, that's a very good question, Marvin. So yes, the idea is you're, that what happens is when you take a piece of gear from one temperature to another, especially when there's humidity involved, like going from a nice warm interior of your car or of your house, stepping outside into the snow, cold, humid air, you get condensation. The, com the combination of the temperature shift, the dramatic temperature shift, and the moisture in the air difference means you get condensation. You can even get condensation on the inside of your lens, and that's going to take forever to dry out, dry out. So essentially what you want to do is you want the temperature change to happen slowly, and you want it to, um, well, you want it to not be changing right before you're shooting. That, that's really what it comes down to. It has to change slowly. So if you've got a camera lens, and you're going to be out shooting your whole gear, let's just say your whole camera kit, and you're going to be out shooting in the cold, take your camera, wrap it up in a plastic bag, in a Ziploc bag, get as much air out of it as you can. Put that camera outside. Put it outside for an hour or so. Let it come down to temp. I'd say come up to temp, but it's come down to temp. Let it cool down, and then that way, when you're ready to shoot, yes, you're going to have a cold camera in your hands, but 
you're not going to have that immediate temperature change. You're not going to get the condensation. Uh, you can take the batteries out, keep them inside. You want to keep your batteries warm. Keep your batteries stuffed in your like in your shirt pocket or something, or in your pants pockets, whatever, to keep them warm. You, you know, cold batteries run out faster, so keep your batteries warm. But that's the key: is not having those dramatic fast temperature changes. The same thing when you go inside. Put that camera back into a dry Ziploc bag and let it come up to temp slowly. Any condensation that's going to happen will be on the outside. The condensation on the outside or inside? I always forget which way that works. Uh, I don't really deal with this all that often. But either way, stick it in a plastic bag. Keep yourself safe. That's that's kind of the only tip that I got. If anybody else has any other ideas for that, uh, let me know. But that's the one that I've always always kind of uh, you know used and had in my head. Uh, Senator says, I'm going to pick up from the post tomorrow a tilt adapter to mount... M42 screw mount lenses on my GH5. We'll report back after trying that out. Oh, right on. So for doing kind of tilt shift stuff, so you're taking tilt shift, you're adapting tilt shift lenses to your GH5 or you're taking any other lens and turning it into a tilt shift with an adapter. That sounds like fun. Cool stuff. Yeah, tell us all about it. Can't wait to hear it. SR Digital says, uh, is this the last show of the year, Joseph? It is. It is the last show of the year. Um, the last show, like I might do a, a like a spontaneous one next week. But yes, Friday I'm taking off because it's right before Christmas. The week between Christmas and New Year, I'm taking off to work on the studio. We are, Ryan and I are going to basically gut the place, rearrange everything, build up multiple sets. It's all going to be out in the main room instead of being in this little room here. I'm moving my editing desk into this little room and moving this recording studio out into the main room. Um, the et my editor, Jason, who you've seen on the air a couple times before, he has moved out. He's taken office space downtown where it's a little bit closer to his home. So that's freeing up some space. And I'm just going to basically build multiple sets out there, try and make it so that the outdoor area there, out outdoor, but the main studio space, everything is a shootable space. That's the goal to have every corner of it be shootable, whether I'm doing a product demo or I want to sit down on the couch and have a conversation with someone or sit at my desk like this to have this conversation. So this set will even look a little bit different just because the background, I'm going to back this desk into a corner. So instead of being a flat wall behind me, it'll be two walls coming together. I think acoustically it might make a difference, but it's also just, that's just where it's going to fit. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And we're going to try and do this all in a couple of days. Yeah, Ryan said we could stream during... We'll, we'll do... <laughs> you think I'm... You're nuts. He wants me to stream live while we're doing this and get ideas from the audience. We'll do a... We could actually do like an open... That's actually... Okay, maybe that's not such a bad idea. Do one of those open uh, channels where it's just open for you know five days straight or something. Huh. We could do it. I mean, we got the power to do it. May as well. All right, maybe we'll do that. You just pop in whenever you want to and throw tomatoes at us, that sort of thing. Interesting. I like it. I don't know. Maybe I like it. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want people's opinion. Just let me do my work done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Marvin says, let's set up the Mevo and leave it running. Yeah. Could, could, ooh, I don't think the, could the Mevo run indefinitely like that? Probably. Yeah, you can. You can plug it in. There you go. You can plug it into power. Hmm, maybe. Maybe. All right. Real House Films wants to help. You're always welcome to come down here, Sean. Um... Let's see here. Jake says, growing up in Minnesota, where we went hunting up in the northern in northern Minnesota, we would leave our guns outside for the entire week. That way, the firing pins wouldn't condensate and freeze up on that critical shot. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So putting your gear outside, I wouldn't leave your camera out for a whole week, but it just needs to be out long enough so it doesn't get condensation on it. Um, you know, fog up your lens. But thank you, Jake. A whole week. Oof. Cold stuff. And Bart says, too many cooks in the kitchen. Well, yeah, that's why I don't really want too many opinions, but... Um, um, leaving a camera running could be not a terrible idea. Um, SRO Digital says, Mevo Christmas, not Friday. Oh, I'm not doing Mevo on Christmas Day. Yeah, my family would kill me. Okay. Let's call this thing a show, shall we? Let's get out of here. Hey, everybody, happy holidays to you. Thanks so much for tuning in for this show. Uh, you know, you realize that this show went from the beginning of this, of this year, which was shortly after we started doing this on YouTube. So we've only been doing it for on YouTube for just over a year. We were at under 1,000 subscribers. We're going to hit 11,000 subscribers by the end of this week, if not by the end of today. We broke that 10,000 mark not that long ago, just a few weeks ago. It's incredible. 
thank you guys. This is all because of you watching. Obviously, if you weren't watching, then nobody would be here. Uh, so if you are watching and you haven't subscribed, please just subscribe. Subscribing subscriptions are great. We like that. It helps us to grow. It helps the channel to get found and so on. It's kind of exponential the way this whole thing goes. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for tuning in on such a regular basis. It is so awesome to see you. Thanks for all for participating in the chat. Uh, the next time you see me here, it's going to likely be a dramatically different look. Hopefully, it actually is for the better, like we're planning on. We shall see. Everybody's saying Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays out there. I appreciate it, everyone. This is awesome. Um, again, couldn't do without you. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. We will see you guys next year in the year of 2018. 2018. Just nuts. Go see Star Wars if you haven't seen it yet. It's awesome. Don't listen to the critics. It's a lot of fun. And we'll see you next time.